In this video, I want to talk about the idea of using reference triangles um, related to inverse trig functions. So the question that we'll be asked here is, what is sine inverse of y? Um, so we want to know, what is the x for sine inverse y? And so this question really is, what angle x has as its sine y? Or better put, do we know what sine of x is equal to the y that we've been given? So this is all built upon right triangle trigonometry. And if you remember, we have a right triangle when we're looking at our trig functions. We have an angle theta. The opposite side is y. The adjacent side is x. And hypotenuse is z. And from that, we get the following six relationships, namely that sine theta is y over z. Cosine theta is x over z. Tangent theta is y over x. Cotangent theta is x over y. Secant theta, which is 1 over cosine, is z over x. And cosecant theta, which is 1 over sine, is z over y. Of course, we also have the Pythagorean relationship, which says that x squared plus y squared is equal to z squared. And this can be used in problems. So if you know two of the sides, you can always find the third side. So when doing these problems, be aware of the angle's ranges, namely that the sine inverse of y, the angle is always between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, including those endpoints. For cosine inverse of y, the angle is always between 0 and pi, including the endpoints. For tangent inverse of y, the angle is always between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, but the endpoints are not included. So there's a subtle difference between the range for angles in the tangent inverse function and the sine inverse function. And for cotangent inverse, the angle x is always between 0 and pi, endpoints not included. So let's look at an example. Suppose we wanted to find cosine inverse of minus 1 over the square root of 2. And we know that would be equal to some angle x. So our goal is to find the angle x. The question is, cosine of x is equal to minus 1 over the square root of 2. Namely, what is the x or the angle for which cosine of that angle is minus 1 over square root of 2? And remember, because we're talking about cosine inverse function, that these angles have to be somewhere between 0 and pi. So if we think about our unit um, circle, we know that the cosine is going to be negative in the second quadrant, because again, we can only take x values between 0 and pi. So negative in the second quadrant. So we need the angle in the second quadrant that has um, its cosine is minus 1 over the square root of 2. If you remember from your unit circle, that would be 3 pi over 4. And so the answer to this question is that the angle that has cosine inverse uh, minus 1 over the square root of 2 is 3 pi over 4. Let's look at a second example, a little more interesting. What if we wanted to find the cotangent? of the angle which is represented by sine inverse of minus the square root of 3 over 2. Well, the first thing we need to realize is that that sine inverse of minus root 3 over 2 represents an angle. And we have to also recall that the angle we're looking for there is the sine of x that's equal to the minus the square root of 3 over 2, and that x has to be somewhere between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, putting it in the first or fourth quadrants. And so, since the sine is negative, we know that that sine is negative in the fourth quadrant, so our angle is going to be minus pi over 3. Because sine of minus pi over 3 is minus the square root of 3 over 2. But that's just one part of the problem. Now that we've found that angle, we need to find the cotangent of that angle. So, if we look at the right triangle trigonometry for that, we see that we have one side, the opposite side, is minus root 3. The hypotenuse is 2. And the adjacent side to that angle, minus pi over 3, is 1. And so cotangent of minus pi over 3 would be the um, adjacent over the opposite. And so we get that the cotangent of minus pi over 3 is minus 1 over root 3. 